I've got all the van doors open and everything because everything's drying off. It's done nothing but rain since we got here, so we're just drying everything out. We're actually here at the fantastic Lindon Lakes complex. We've been staying here on site in this lovely lodge, as you can see. Very nice, warm, cosy. It's been a fantastic place to stay. There are so many lakes on the complex, you know, when you're here for a few days, you've got a really nice variety of places to, uh, to fish. These lodges have got their own pegs. These lads have just kicked off. Morning lads. Morning. 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 What's at stake today? Is it money or bragging rights or both? <laughs> These lads are fishing here today. I'm not going to be fishing this lake today. I will be having a day on here, um, possibly tomorrow. And that's because today we're going to be fishing one of the other lakes at the other side of the complex. Yesterday we fished on Loco. I'll put a link above to that session. That was a brilliant session with the pellet waggler and on the method feeder. But today we're just going to go and get some breakfast now at the on-site cafe. And then we're going to head on over to the other side of the complex where we're possibly going to fish either Benny's or Beecher's. Well, the lake that we are fishing today is known as Benny's. There are loads of F1s in this lake. It's a lake I've never fished before. So I'm gonna be fishing with a pole. I'm gonna try and catch some fish up in the water. I've got a rig set about that deep. I'm just gonna keep flicking pellets in and just see what we can catch. We might have to mess around with the depth to find the right depth to catch the fish at. And then I'm gonna be fishing down the margin later on with a little pellet feeder. But I'm gonna be priming that line for the second part of the session. So. I'm only going to be fishing where I can feed with my left hand. Just keep trickling those pellets in and hopefully we're going to have a few of those F1s queuing up, waiting for that hard banded pellet. Now, I'll openly admit that what little I know about this lake, I think four mil pellets would be best to feed. And I know that's what a lot of people use on here. However, I'm going to use six mils. I just want to see if it's going to attract a better stamp of fish. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, I don't know. So I'm going to be feeding hard six mil pellets, all right, just by hand. And I'm going to be using a six mil pellet actually on a band as well. We've got size 16 hook on. I'll show you the rig in a little while when we get going. It's just a hard banded pellet. I'm just going to keep flicking the rig over. Keep trickling pellets in where I can loose feed them at about six meters. The sun's just gone in, the clouds are coming. There were fish crashing everywhere this morning when we got here, but it's just gone a little bit quiet now. So we're just gonna keep those pellets trickling in and hopefully we can attract a few fish. That's the first sign anyway, so I've been fishing about five minutes, been trickling those pellets in. That was the first indication, so just gonna keep the pellets going in. If we've got to mess around with the depths, um, then we obviously can do. I'll show you the rig in a minute and the elastic and that sort of thing. Just gone a little bit deeper and this is the first fish there are fish topping and you know i've been fishing about a foot and a half something like that and i haven't i've had a couple of quick bites but, but this is the first one that i've hooked just a little bit deeper like i said i'll show you the rig in a minute this is number um well it's the the orange the orange slick that I'm using. I'm gonna control that fish, decent F1 actually, a bit bigger than I thought. So that's first cast, having gone a little bit deeper, so we'll find out if that's the best depth to be at. Quite a good fish that one, I didn't expect one as thick as that. Really thick fish, lovely. Just get that pellet out, and I'll show you the rig. Keep them pellets going in. Keep rattling, making that noise. That's all I've got. 
usual simple rig it's a four inch hook length okay these are ready tied hook lengths that i'm using i haven't used these before because as you well i have used them but on the method feeder i haven't used them on the pole that's part of what today's session is about so um they're ready, ready tied hook lengths the matrix ones i've then got just a single shot so there's no stot on this just a, a shot which i'm experimenting with i don't know if it makes any difference from it being a, a stot i do like stots because they stay on the line much better especially when you're catching fish um and then i've just got a nice little dibber simple as that i thought the fish would be really shallow and that's why i've selected a dibber and then that length between the float and the actual dacron um, will change obviously as i'm moving the float up and down and if i find an optimum depth then i can obviously shorten that which might mean i hook more fish i haven't got loads of top kits set up today for this if i was going to fish a match here like this i'd have several top kits with rigs set up at different um different depths um and that's just the orange uh, slick so that's the depth that i've caught at so i'm going to find out now see if that is the optimum depth that's going to be best for catching yeah so that's two and two at that depth now um i can shorten that length between the uh, dacron and the uh, and the float if need be another f1 a little bit smaller that one a lovely fish especially if they keep coming every cast that's how you can really rack up a good weight Keep those pellets going in but i am feeding this margin line with little nuggets of micros for the second part and all that is basically nuggets like that no ground bait or anything nice little nuggets of pellets and they're just going down that margin for later on trying to find the best feeding pattern sometimes <clears throat> sometimes you can get away with order feeding anything you know you're almost starving them onto the hook I'm uh, I'm definitely no expert at this sort of fishing but I know about how they feed and sometimes you can get away with feeding virtually nothing however up to now I'm actually actually having having to feed I'm having to put some pellets in feeding two or three times and then going a few seconds without feeding and then flicking the rig in and just picking off fish that way but and that might you know when it's like that you might not even work it out for the rest of the day you know sometimes you have spells of fish and sometimes they might want to feed differently i mean there's fish top in there now so there are some fish here now just got to try and see if we can get one every cast and then we know we're doing it right Proper fish, that one. Look at that one. Look at that one, that's the biggest one so far today. Beautiful fish. However, it's not quite working. I'll be absolutely honest with you. I virtually never fish like this. Um, there are fish there. I know there are fish there, but they're outsmarting me at the minute. The pellets don't seem quite right. Maybe the four mils would have been much, much better, as I suspected. I've had a few fish, but I think I should be catching more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a switch. I'm just gonna to switch to maggots. I've got loads of live red maggots here. I'm gonna start feeding them. I'm gonna come back a meter as well because I think I can catch a little bit closer. There are fish topping everywhere, so I'm gonna to switch to maggots. I might start catching small fish. That could be a problem. That's what happens on some venues. However, if there are that many F1s there, they may prefer the maggots. So we won't know unless we try it. I'm just gonna keep feeding them by hand, but I'm gonna come back a meter. And all I'm going to do is just simply cut the band off that same size 16 hook. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to band the maggots. I'm just going to hook a single maggot on the hook as normal through the, through the pointy end. 
just so it leaves lots of the hook exposed like that like I say small fish might be a problem I don't know I've never fished on here before but I guess we'll find out All oh, right, okay then. <laughs> Got one first cast. Keep them maggots going in. I've got a good two, two, two and a half pints maybe. I can really keep them going in. There we go. And obviously if you can catch them shorter, that's gonna make it even quicker. Planes are going over again. There's been loads of planes recently. Can't quite hold on to that one. Still fighting. There we go. I don't want this to be a hook a duck session. You know, I don't do this fishing very often, but it's just gonna be nice to see if we can get them lined up before we go down this margin and see if we can catch some bigger fish. Much better reaction with maggots, much better. Just missed a couple of bites, so that depth might not be quite right. And plus I'm not quite sure what to feed yet. You know, what sort of quantity. Another F1. So I'll just keep the maggots going in, keep the fish there. And then the rest we've got to work out while we're fishing it. Lovely stamp of fish though, fantastic. Real weight builders. We're just gonna keep them maggots going in. And the challenge now is to get one every cast. It's a smaller fish that one to break down now I don't think you don't need to unship when you're catching like this you can get your rolls positioned in a position where you can just ship straight back that'll obviously make the whole process much quicker and much smoother got to feed enough to keep them there but you don't want to feed too much so that there's not much competition for the hook bait that's the that's the thing we have one fishing even when we're feeder fishing just feed enough to keep them there but then you still want to be able to compete for your hook bait otherwise you can end up missing bites and all sorts it definitely seems to be working now I think I'm gonna have five or ten more drop-ins with this, see if we can catch one every single cast. And if that is the case, then I'm gonna have a look down this margin with a pellet feeder and see if we can pick out some better fish. I've lost count of how many fish we've had on that now, but it literally is one a bung now on the maggot. So, you know, maybe there was a better way of catching the fish on those pellets shallow. I don't know if there was, I didn't work it out. And maybe the four mil pellets would have been, you know, would have made a big difference, but I've switched to maggot and that's what's transformed it. So it, that was good to try. I'm glad I tried it now. So it's, it's literally a fish of cast on that line now with maggot, just single maggot hooked on the 16. Uh, it's an MXC three hook. I think it is just hooking the maggot on normally. 
it's really enjoyable fishing. If, if it was a match, it would be uh, a case of getting your head down and putting some fish in the net. Now it's time to try this margin line. Now I don't know if we're gonna catch any bigger fish. I've been priming this line just down here to my left for just over an hour. I've been putting those little nuggets of micro pellets in, just squeezing, slightly over wetted, so they're nice and sticky. And I've just been putting those in down, just down to my left, about five or six meters down the side of these reeds. So I've seen one or two of the reeds moving. We are expecting the fish to uh, consider spawning any time now so that could be a sign of that but i'm going to fish this with a little pellet feeder i'll show you the rig it's a really simple setup but it's one that obviously needs to be strong in case there are going to be some big edge dwellers down there so hopefully we're going to get a good reaction just got the six mil hard banded pellet as hook bait, nice and simple, really durable as well. So when there's lots of fish down there, you know, they're knocking the bait everywhere. They're not gonna knock that, uh, that hook bait off. And then all I'm doing is putting a few pellets in, in the feeder. I don't know how many pellets are in there, probably 25, 30. Pressing the hook bait in, and then putting some pellets over the top of it. These pellets are a little bit wetter than normal, but as you can see, it's a lovely little feeder pack with feed for them. I'm just dropping that about half a meter off those reeds. And it's been far better to leave a slack line. With a tight line, all what's happening is the fish are getting hooked up on it. Um, because there are fish up in the water coming in and out of the peg, they're getting hooked up on the line. And that's dislodging the feeder, and you're obviously getting lots of indications on the tip. I pulled out of two fish that have been far hooked anyway. So by slack lining, it just means that you're encouraging that line to go down onto the bottom and hopefully stay out of the way of fish moving in and out of the peg. And because it's a self-hooking rig, the fish are on. So there's no mistaking the bite just like that. They just hook themselves. Another F1. Beautiful fish. I honestly think what happened was because I've been priming the peg with little nuggets of pellets whilst I was fishing the pole line with little nuggets like that. I think I must have just been feeding too much when I first got on this line. I've been having lots of indications, but now, now I'm not feeding with those nuggets. I'm not feeding quite as much. The only bit of bait what's going in is the bait that's actually in this feeder. And the beauty with these feeders is, or this style of feeder, is that there's only one way into the pellets. As you can see it's sideways on. When a fish comes in, it's got to suck there to get the pellets out. And that's right where your hook bait is. Your hook bait is right there. So it's inevitable that your hook bait's got to get sucked in. And once it gets sucked in, assuming your hair rig and everything's working properly, the fish should hook itself. I've been asked quite a few times why I prefer to fish like this. Over fishing the pole. Well, there are times when this can outfish the pole. One of the things is when you're feeding with a pole line, it's easy to it's easy to put too much feed in and get too many fish in your peg. And that can lead to all sorts of problems, line bites and that sort of thing. Fish coming up off the bottom and, and that sort of thing. With a feeder like this, your line is kind of down on the bottom, out of the way. You can leave a nice big slack line like I'm doing today. And you can virtually ignore the line bites, you know, and just wait for positive pulls where the whole rod goes. But when, you know, you, you're actually making sure you know when the fish has hooked itself. The other advantage is increasingly more on fisheries these days, the fish are getting bigger and bigger. And on some venues that I fish, you know, it's quite common to get a 20 pound carp or to hook one. And when you're hooking these margin fish on a 
rod and reel set up then you know with those bigger fish it can actually give you a better chance of landing any huge fish like that as well you know sometimes they're easier to land on a rod and line than what they would be on a pole setup so that's another advantage really positive pull again really working efficiently now it's only in there for a minute and a half two minutes really and then it's a proper pull much cleaner you know not getting line bites like we were earlier really energetic hand size f1s beautiful Well, I've just had three or four fish down that margin, which is great. I got some line bites earlier on. There were some fish milling about, but I think they were up in the water. But now a few pellets have gone in. I'm fishing the smallest size pellet feeder because I don't want to feed too much. You know what it's like with F1s. It's quite easy to, to blow your peg up and have too many fish there. I'm just fishing a six mil hard banded pellet. It looks like they've settled down on that feed now. So, uh, and as you've seen, the bites are quite aggressive. So I'm gonna see if I can catch a few more before the end of the session. Well, it's clear to see that this lake is absolutely stuffed with fish. However, we start to ring some changes to keep, you know, keep the fish coming. Change from pellets to maggots and then down that margin. I've, I just had to kind of slow things down, but it's absolutely solid with fish now. I can see how they get the great weights here. There is a lake next to this, which is Loco. I did film a session video there a few days ago. So if you didn't see that, then I'll put the link at the end of this video to that video for you. I did a little bit of pellet waggler fishing and some method feeder fishing short as well caught some big fish in that as well so hopefully you'll enjoy that hope you've enjoyed this insight into this incredible fishery it's absolutely stuffed with fish dad has fished next to me as well uh, and he's been catching fish as well so it's been a thoroughly enjoyable session at a fantastic venue so thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give it a thumbs up and i look forward to seeing you next time <laughs>